Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. We have two guests today in part one of a special profile that was captured at this year's NAM show, specifically at Soundcheck for the Tech Awards. The co-musical directors of the Tech Awards and our very dear friends, Claytoven Richardson and Larry Batiste. Their musical cred goes back decades, and they've played with, backed up, and bossed around some of the absolute best in the business. Les Paul, Jackson Brown, The Whispers, Bill Summers, Natalie Cole, Lettucey, Jimmy Jam, and Terry Lewis. The list is a mile long, and on this particular day, they were preparing for the Tech Awards performance that honored and included Peter Frampton. And much more important than that, the list of greats who know and love these two continue to astound me even though I can no longer be surprised by any of it. The last time I was in a room with Larry and Clay Tovin, it was a beautiful house in the Oakland Hills. It was a stunning gem of modern lines and custom furnishings with a view of several of the Bay Area's famous bridges and about a couple million of its people. The concert grand piano in the great room of this house was shiny and stunning. And on that particular night, about 50 of us were given special invitation to an evening with the legendary David Porter. I was greeted by Clay Tovin when I got there, and he made me feel right at home. Just in my immediate circle for this listening party were Lenny Williams, Ron Moton, Fred Ross, Chuck Lounge, and Don Lewis. It was an amazing night, and I was lucky to be there, and I was there because I had been invited by Larry Batiste. See, when David Porter comes to town to hold court, the person he calls on to assemble that court is Larry. Now, we do this show to grow our tribe and expose everyone to acclaimed people doing brilliant work, and in order to do so, I need your help. Wherever you're listening to this show, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, wherever, hook us up with some digital love. A five-star rating and a positive review is all we ask, and if you do that part, the platforms will do the rest. Which, by the way, was my pickup line at my first junior high dance. Also, if you'd like to support our favorite cause, it's Save the Brave. You can read about them at savethebrave.org. They are a certified 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to helping veterans cope with post-traumatic stress. You can read all about them and throw them a couple bucks at that website. That's savethebrave.org. You know, just a couple bucks you're not using right now. No kidding, Pete and I both support Save the Brave with our time and our recurring contributions right out of our PayPal accounts. And Scott Husing does the same, and he serves on their board. So we urge you to do something for them, too. And I urge you to sit back and listen from the 2019 Tech Awards to part one of this profile on Bay Area music greats, Larry Batiste and Clay Tovin Richardson. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. Is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this is East. Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morales. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. This is Larry Batiste. And this is Clay Toa Richardson. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to, to the, the Break, Break It, it Down, Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. That sounds like a couple of guys who may have worked together in the past at some point. A little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> so I had to stop Clay Tovin because he started to say, you know, Larry and I met. And I said, well, okay, we got to go this. <laughs> but I want to tell our audience that we are at the NAM Show 2019. We're here in the, in the ballroom where they're going to hold the Tech Awards tonight. Yes. And the Tech Awards are... For our uninitiated listeners, think of it as the Grammys for everybody who's not the artist that you know who is famous. Absolutely. Here's where we celebrate all those folks. Larry and Clay Tovin have been the musical directors for these tech awards for a few years now. Uh, I think this is the 24th year. Wow. The 24th year. <laughs> wow. wow. It's been a long time. <laughs> Jeez. All you got to do is keep breathing. Well, Clay Tovin is 27 years old. <laughs> yeah, right, How do you right. explain this? We're the same age. She got started in 95. <laughs> right. 
Wow. Yes. Yeah. How different is the setup in this room now over those 25 years? Oh, my God. It's like night and day. Yeah. yeah. It really is, you know. Tech Awards used to be part of AES in New York. And right. It varied from New York to uh, Los Angeles to San Francisco. And I think we've been a part of NAM for seven or eight years now. Thank you. Seven yeah. or eight years yes, now. Yes. So when you started this endeavor back in 95, it came through, if I remember correctly, it came through your association with Hillel Resner. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was the one who approached me at first about Tech Awards. You know, uh, Clay and I both do a lot of volunteer work with the Recording Academy. Mm-hmm. And uh, one year we would produce an event. He said, there's no, nothing for R&B folks. So we produced a thing about songwriting and publishing. And, and it was very successful. And that time, it was the, the 80s or 90s or something and and in our area tony 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 and in vogue and all these people were popular yeah. we had them do it it was very successful and then the next day halal says hey how would you like to be the musical director of the tech awards and uh i didn't know what that was but and I, you said yes anyway well i knew it was a job uh-huh. so. <laughs> <laughs> but we um we went to lunch the next day and opened up a, a script he had and you know, all these great people were there. I'm going, oh, man, they're going to actually be here? So, you know, so, so of course I said yes. And uh, it was the beginning yeah. of uh, the, doing the of tech a, Of a long and storied uh, relationship here. Just beautiful. Well, speaking of long and storied relationships, though, I'm going to rewind back a little further and talk about the Bay Area folks that you uh, mentioned because I like to give shout outs. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, Tommy's been on the show. Mm-hmm. And so we always want to shout out Tommy McElroy. Denzel has not been on the show yet. We have to rope him in. We got to get him. But uh, Dwayne, I think Dwayne was our episode three. He was number six. Talks. Six. Yeah. Yeah. We did like our first five or six episodes at Dwayne's house. Mm-hmm. So he was instrumental in us getting yeah. started. But to rewind back even further, I'm going to tie in your association with Dwayne and where you and Clay Tovin met, Larry. And that was in junior high. Yes, um, junior high. Junior yeah. high. Actually, you know, I went to. Uh, we went to different high junior high schools, but we used to have battle of the bands in right. those days. Okay, and we yeah. actually met at the battle of the bands. I, we were in separate bands. Mm-hmm. This happens to junior high school students, no it, matter what discipline. You could be football players, baseball players, basketball players, musicians. Right. You know, right around junior high is when the other kid from across town goes to another junior high. He's the baddest one over there. Oh, yeah, and man. You're going to get to know that kid. Oh, look. Because something's going to happen. Yeah. Man, right? well, it was kind of crazy because we, we were in competing bands. Of course. <laughs> and played in this battle of the bands. His band won. Uh-huh. My band took second place. Okay. Have you ever ever held that over his head? I'm sure. No, oh. because like, you know, I'll tell well, you something. Let's just say that you should. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at this guy. He really stood out. I mean, he was bad as hell, but not only... Was he a, a brilliant musician? Mm-hmm. Um, he was playing all the saxophone players. You know, James Brown was popular. Yeah. Everybody, man, they played James Brown. Right. But he's playing all the saxophone parts on a bass clarinet. On a bass clarinet. Uh, okay. I'm going, <laughs> my God. So I had to get the story on wow. that. So I'm going, man, he stood out. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. <laughs> you know, back in those days, well, you had to make it make do. <laughs> okay. So just to give it some context for our listeners who are not uh woodwind artists or musicians at all that's like kicking field goals with a basketball basically <laughs> yeah that's a good analogy. so when you show up and you go hey i saw their football team and their kicker was kicking field goals with a basketball everybody's gonna go we better go see that guy yeah, and <laughs> we kicking better butt. not let them get in field goal range. <laughs> right, right. so okay you're playing you're playing james brown licks on a bass clarinet you got uh, that would make Maceo stop and go. Who? What? I gotta go see this kid. Right. So, ever since then, you have known each other by association. You competed. You knew to look out for each other. And then we realized that we that we don't live too far from each yeah, other. I see. You know, so we started hanging out and. We just became really great friends and started writing songs together and, you know, started a horn section together, you know, that whole bit, you know. Yeah. We got some uh, noise coming in over the top because we are here in Soundcheck. So I want our listeners to 
you know, you might think, oh, that's going to annoy me. No, it's not going to annoy you. It's going to make you feel like you are way inside. Because, because you are. are. <laughs> yeah. Right now, you are way, way inside. Well, this is actually a tech rehearsal uh -huh. where they're, they're running all the audio and video to make sure everything's going to work. Everything works. Right. That's right. Now, we're talking about Leslie. Yes. Yeah. So, a Lifetime Achievement Award. That's what she's getting tonight? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. What a Hall lifetime of, she's actually, had. Actually, oh, Hall of Fame. Fame. Okay. Yeah. Well, very similar. Very she certainly similar. deserves a Hall of Fame Award uh, for somebody being so instrumental to the music of the Bay Area. And really to the formation of both of your careers as well. Absolutely. Yes, sure. Well, Leslie Ann Jones is just, wow. I think she's just been around forever. Mm -hmm. And she turned us on to a lot of gigs. Yeah. You know, and. Helped us out on some projects. Well, mm -hmm. let's yeah. talk about how, what I'm, uh, what I really want to start with about this topic, though, is how young you were when you started working with her. Wow. Hmm. Early twenties. Yeah. 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 I mean, really, 20s. the beginnings of your career. Yeah, actually. Yeah, early twenties. Um, uh, I say we we actually started. Uh, we put a band together, of course, in high school and all that. I guess I Castle Mont High. Castle we should High. mention Castle Mont High. Castle Mont. Castle Mont. Shout out! And um, I think our first professional recording was Bill Summers and Summer Seat. Oh man, but we did stuff no. before that. What, what was that? What's that? You shaking, baby? What's that? Oh, Richard Dibblesfield. Oh, Richard Dibblesfield. Was actually... <laughs> What's that? You shaking, you guys, baby? You guys know is it that name? I do. I when do I, not. When I, I was in high CD school, in my back <laughs> when I was in high school, there was a guy named Richard Dibblesfield used to come and pick us up and have us uh, do horn arrangements and stuff for his records. His name was Richard Dimples Fields. Uh -huh. Finger licking good. My baby's got papers. Uh -huh. uh, was, I can't remember. My baby's it. got papers. The big one was, what's that you shaking, baby? What's that you shaking, and you guys baby? And the hook was play butter. butter. <laughs> <laughs> Man, and he was an Oakland artist? He was He was in Oakland, yeah. and he eventually moved to L.A. And, you know, he made some noise in the R&B scene. And paid us royally. I think he gave us burgers or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, 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 played, we played a lot of gifts for hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's part of the part of the process. And look yeah, at you. Yeah, yeah. You're in this grand ballroom. We should probably take a picture of this ballroom just while it's empty so that people can understand the size and scope of this thing because mm -hmm. it's huge. Yeah. And the first time you guys played this, it wasn't nearly this big. You no, know, I was telling the story of one of the New York, the New York one, where we were playing, and it was a, and it was in a place that's maybe a lot, maybe a, a fourth of this place. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. they were first trying to do all electronics oh. and the videos and stuff, and they blew out the fuse <laughs> for the hotel. Right, like a, half the hotel <laughs> for the hotel. <laughs> So the whole show got shut down, yeah. like about a half an hour. And you're yeah. sitting there with a the crowd by candlelight. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but you know what? And um, what did you do? Uh, Larry started tab dancing. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Tell yeah, the jokes. Really. Yeah. Yeah. But we, I tell you, though, what's really improved is the technology. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just the way things, things are. It's just like night and day. Okay. You know. But how has it affected your ability as a musical director? The technology has improved. There's certainly a lot more visual going on. There's a lot more. The sound is better. Yeah. But in terms of your ability to act as an MD, mm -hmm. let's talk about how the technology has furthered. Well, for us, we deal with it from two different aspects. Mm -hmm. For the most part, Larry's the, the MD. I, I come in as the assistant MD. But my job is mostly to do the music arranging and things like that. Okay. And because of the technology, for for me on my end, just being able to do charts, turn them into MP3s, uploading them to, 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 to um, uh, um, online things like Dropbox. Yeah. So the musicians can see things. To allow people to do their homework yeah, more efficiently. It was, it's just incredible. And then for him, the things that he's able to deal with on the technology side. Let's pause for a moment before you get to Larry's benefits. But I, I think with regard to allowing all of that uh, arrangement stuff, and the charts and all of that to run more smoothly. What I want our audience to understand is that this is not just a convenience issue. This allows for more complicated arrangements. It allows for you to really take the caliber of the show and boost it up. Yes. So now we're talking about folks getting arrangements faster, allowing them to do more homework, get the reps in, take the time while they're on a plane or 
all of these things allow for better music to come to yes. come through absolutely because we have very limited time mm -hmm. even with grammys we only have a one three hour rehearsal we had a one three hour rehearsal to do 90 to practice 91 walk-ons and feature performances and so like 91 walk-ons yeah and yeah. so like so having that technology yeah being able to send mp3s ahead of time send charts ahead of time right and so these musicians get a chance to you know know the familiarize music. themselves so when i when, when i when i get to the rehearsal when mm -hmm. we get there people aren't trying to learn the stuff yeah they're prepared they are already prepared i'm just kind of running through and sometimes i don't even do the whole song because we don't have time i, I catch parts of it exactly. and we do things like so the technology is really it's really a, helped a benefit yeah. and this show Thank God for this show. We don't have to uh, rehearse any performances because Peter Frampton is bringing his band and they're going to perform. Oh, they, they, know the yeah. <laughs> they know the tunes. They know the tunes. So for the one performance. This is the one. We, the we're, yeah, yeah, we're doing an opening okay. performance. And uh, we brought in our homies. Oh, yeah. You know, to open. And, Man, you got Tony Lindsay. Uh, we got Tony Lindsay on Nate. background. Nate is singing lead. Uh. And, um, and there, there was a girl named Skylar Jordan uh -huh. singing. She sings with... Um, uh, Dee Dee Bridgewater and a whole bunch of people. She's great. She's in the LA area. Okay. And uh, we was going to have um, a Monet Owen sing. Okay. And uh, she couldn't make it. She said, call my friend. Oh, no. Call my friend. She's here. Oh, I you see. You know, that. they sing it with Dee Dee Bridgewater together. And so she called, I called and she says, oh, you got to be there. All this technology, like we're looking at about 150 feet of video screen, I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah. It's uh -huh. huge. Yes. I mean, it's like the stadium. Yeah. And then, the show has gotten bigger, I'm imagining, over the years. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so right. are there more people involved in planning this thing, or does the technology kind of keep it about the same? Or, I mean, 25 years of growth. Well, I think there's more people involved because, you know, they, they have to show social media aspects of it and the, yeah. all the marketing and promotion and stuff like that. But we, you know, we have a good problem that's, that is that is always sold out. So in terms of people involved, I don't know there's more people involved. It seems to be. It seems to be there more. It's, especially with all the recording they're doing, because now, the, uh, uh, now, aside from just the show going on and, and that being that, yeah, uh, they're recording it for YouTube and right. streaming and all these different things. So there are a lot of extra people that are involved with that. Okay. Know? So well, when we were making our arrangements to be here, we were talking with the, the PR folks. I don't know if they want to be named, but we were talking with the PR folks who are great to us. And I was asking if I could get a board recording, because what we're going to do is we'll talk about some of the challenges that you're facing here. We'll talk about that opening number. We'll cut in a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. And then she said, I don't know if anybody's recording it. And I said, it's the Tech Awards. Yeah, it's always recorded. It's, yeah. it's, everything everybody recorded. here is a sound person. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure somebody's recording yeah. it. It's always recorded. Yeah. There are a lot of different missions going on. I mean, the PR folks, the social media folks, everybody has a, a different snippet of something to do. All the video editors mm -hmm. and all the And a lot know, of this stuff is, is, is getting cut in real time so it can get posted mm -hmm. short time later. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Man. There's a lot going on. Before we talk about the challenges of the show, I want to ask, do you guys in the in the 20 some odd years you've been doing this, how many is it? 25? 24. This is 24. 24th. Mm -hmm. It's the 24th mm -hmm. year. 95 being the first year. Mm -hmm. You know, Hillel Resner was my boss in 97. You're kidding me. Wow. Yeah. What a uh, great guy. He probably doesn't remember me because uh. he didn't have, he was my boss's boss's boss, really. He was the <laughs> publisher of Mix Magazine, so he was everybody's mm -hmm. boss. Yeah. But, uh, we did get us. We got a very strong sense of what a great guy he was because just the way he ran the shop. Yeah. So want to shout out to him. But can you talk about either one of you having very favorite moments that were magical that happened in those 24 years at this show? Do you remember things that uh, stick out in your head where you go, oh, man, that was well, a moment. I know, I know for me, mm -hmm. it's not so much the show itself. For me, it's it's the same magical moment every year is like for me i'm sitting at home in my pajamas for like about 45 days uh -huh. you know doing charts going back and forth with larry doing these arrangements getting things together and for me the magic is every rehearsal when i hear that work uh -huh. come to life uh -huh. in the rehearsal and it's just amazing to me to hear these great musicians interpret the music the way that they do yeah and for me 
that's a serious euphoric moment every year for me. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. The thing is, I really love working around people who are professional. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody's doing their job. Everybody is, you know, doing their thing. And when I'm dealing with the artists, you know, from the beginning to, you know, meeting their publicists, meeting their management, and eventually meeting them, yeah. figuring out what they want to do in terms of their performance, having all these conversations, and then doing the face-to-face -face here the day of the show, yeah. and uh, meeting some great people. This is the fun part of him so, being an yeah. event like this. Yeah, you know, the thing is, like, in this show, we're honoring people who are pretty much icons and veterans yeah. and stuff. And so when you get to meet, these people are really relaxed. You know, when you work with a bunch of kids, sometimes... They also you know, know that they're walking they're, into this situation. Yeah, but a lot of kids are anxious and stuff, but you uh -huh. get veterans. They're calm, they're cool, yeah. they're collected. You know, like last year, we worked with... Uh, you know, the Jackson Brown and, and their band and all the cats who did all the original recordings. Yeah. And they're coming, they're just cool. They're having their coffee. And I saw just, on the slideshow, I saw Lehman's Claw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and just this fun, laid back people, you know, Jackson Brown walks in in his jeans and stuff, hugs everybody and, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And so there's no whatever. And all the jitters are gone. All the jitters are gone. You get to and, just have the fun. And people are just yeah. doing what they do. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so. Wow. When, I'm putting together one of these shows. I know it's a really good show. When I get lost and I forget that I'm editing and then I have to wind back. Do you guys have moments like that where you're here and you're like, oh, that's right. I'm actually working right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Sometimes it's so much fun and the music is so great. You have to go, oh, man, I, I got to remember I'm not in the audience. You know, the bridge, is, the bridge is coming up. I need to cue it. You know? <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot where it just sounds so good that you can't believe it. You know, my very yeah. first year, <laughs> it, was, it was in New York, and I didn't know any musicians in New York. And so I had this friend named Tom Barney, bass player. He played with Steely Dan and mm -hmm. uh, a Saturday Night Live band and a whole bunch of people. And uh, so I called Tom and said, man. Well, I wait got... a minute. How did you know Tom Barney? I met him because he had come to the Bay Area playing with Luther Vandross. Okay. And I had a friend who knew that whole camp I and see. stuff. So I go to the Circle Star. Uh -huh. I remember that? Yes, And uh, I meet Luther wow, and I meet Circle. Tom Barney. <laughs> and we stayed in contact and just okay. became friends. So, so now fast uh, forward, you get the so gig. So fast forward, I get the gig. Uh -huh. And I called Tom and said, man, do you, can you put together a band for me? And he said, sure. I, I show up to New York and who do I have? It's the Steely Dan rhythm section. <laughs> <laughs> so, who, do you remember specifically who it was? I can't remember all the guys. Right, but names. everybody was just veteran. And you Bad walked ass. into a situation where you guys didn't have to worry about. Yes, yeah, so that happens. And that I think that kind of pretty much solidified my, you know. Your employment at yeah. the Tech Awards? Because, yeah, if I'm worried about the music being presented and all of a sudden I hear this performance, you know, and I go... Boy, we better just get that again next year. But then the whole thing, too, is that the cats read the charts and all the charts there. Everything is, you know what I mean, in yeah. place. And then when you talk about magic, you know, we have the charts. But like Clay says, once you hear them play, uh -huh. you know, you go, oh, my God. Now that, it's a lot. I wasn't even expecting that. You yeah, know, that's, yeah. that's, I mean, that's even better than what I expected. And so those are magical moments. That's you know? funny to hear coming yeah. from horn players. Yeah. Because, Clay Tobin, we introduced you as a woodwind player. Larry, you were a trombonist. I for played many, trombone, many years. yeah. So mm -hmm. it's one thing when you walk into a place and you see a trumpet or a tenor sax. When you start seeing the more exotic horns, when you see a trombone, yes. you know, if you see a bass clarinet, if yeah. you see something that, a little out of the ordinary, then you can go, oh, oh, it's serious. Right. It's right. serious in here. Yeah. You know, when you see somebody's acts that is not one of the standards, you go, okay. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. that guy doesn't get invited unless there's yeah. been a long relationship or a lot of rehearsals. Right. Or, right? That's, or like, like our bass players. That was the first time I ever saw a six-string bass. Uh-huh. Mm. <laughs> and so, for me, that changed when uh, Melvin Davis became a part of the Oh, group, my goodness. Um, is he playing with you tonight? Me, oh, he as, is. He's right there. Melvin Melvin that table. Davis. Wow. Yeah, for me on the radio <laughs> side, it changed things. Yeah. Because, you know, usually you can't go past a, you know, a low E. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
I'm like, wait a minute. Right. I, I, I get he a just C, opened up the register. I, get a, you know, I mean, wow. you put pajamas on and get to work. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. I got some extra stuff. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just incredible. And, and a lot of these musicians bring some things that, you know, when Larry's thinking about what music to do and, and then I'm thinking about how to interpret that music, you know, arrange it wise. Hall of Fame induction ceremony. The, the, the skill level that we have, it really makes it, it gives us a um, a freedom. A, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's you that's can do whatever you want. Freedom. Uh huh. Because yeah. you don't have to worry. Okay, is this not going to be too high? Is this phrase going to be too difficult? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we could just go for it. Yeah. Like the, the first show. I mean, that raised the bar, right? Mm -hmm. The bar is really wow, high. That's really when high. You start there. Yeah. And so let, let us know that we had to make sure we had musicians of that caliber yeah, uh -huh. to carry the thing through when we you know, come to You Los never Angeles. wanted to hear, man, what happened this year? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I remember yeah. I was there yeah. last year. Right, exactly. What happened this year? Exactly. You can't. You got to top it every time. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So we got, you know, Melvin on bass, you know, he MDs Shaka Khan and all these other great, really yeah. written art places people. Toshi on guitar, he uh, plays in Jimmy Kimball live band and, and stuff. And uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Jaden Bean. Jaden Bean on, uh, uh, on drums. And he's somebody who used to be a student of Clay Tovins. And he's come on up when Will Kennedy couldn't make it. Wow. He stepped right in the shoes. All right. And let's uh, see so who else we have. Uh, uh, Will so, Kennedy went to Castle Ball with you guys. Oh too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had a, we had a group called Private Eye after Bill Summers and Summers Heat. Yeah, yeah. We did. that's a whole other story. <laughs> okay. We have so many lives we lived. Yeah, and, uh, and our saxophone player um, Charles McNeil. Okay, who's you know he plays with Loud Love It and a whole bunch of great people. Yeah, and everybody's uh, a everybody, top notch. Everybody's pro. you know, so we're 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 having fun. And again, for our audience, we're at NAM 2019. The thing about NAM is. Yesterday, I was uh, watching Russell Ferrante play. Yeah. And he, you know, he's amazing. But then I looked around and I saw next to me Corey Jacobs, mm -hmm. Matt Fink, mm -hmm. Victoria yeah. Theodore. Oh, I'm yes. like, everybody oh, yes. here yes. who's checking out this amazing person is an amazing person. Is an amazing person. And so you're going to be filled here at the Tech Awards. Everybody who comes to see this mm -hmm. is a professional. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so that's really the caliber that you guys have delivered for 24 years in a row. Yeah. Is you've grown a group of professionals to want to keep coming back to see this. Yeah. That's an achievement that I don't want to overlook. And I want our audience to realize what we're talking about here. I want to ask, you guys have known each other since junior high, right? Yeah. And I've got friends that I've known since the 70s. You've worked together for a long time. Yes. So... You guys know how to stay out of each other's way, but you also like you know what he needs. You know, right. like, oh, he's gonna want this without even you know, know. You knowing that it's a yeah. I'm shutting up. Yes, head. yes. No, no, no. No, no. Let me I throw that to pass towards the rim. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, it's yeah. it's just it's really good. I mean, he pretty knows the voicing and the whole thing that we hear. We know that we got an eight piece band. We got three horns to work with, and when I'm trying to pick the music. You know, first I have to research the, all the presenters and know what they're associated with. Then I try to find the right song that's associated with them and then the, the right version of that. So we got to come up with something that fits our band. That's the right, that's appropriate for the, you know. Thing. Yeah. And so it's a lot of pre-stuff before. And, and he knows just just what the, <laughs> he's, he's got it down, you know. You yeah, know what I'm sorry we can't needs. give an example of is the inside jokes. Because when you work with somebody for so long, you put something in that arrangement well, just to go. <laughs> well, we do. You remember we, this one, right? <laughs> right. We, we do have an inside joke because he's he's my idol in terms of like marriage. He's been married for the for the longest time. My my unfortunately I haven't been able to keep a man together too well. You know, that's that's become my profession. <laughs> but you getting practice in though. But we we chip on, you know, everybody asks us how we've been able to be friends so long and work together. Yeah. And the first the first thing is business is business and friendship is friendship. Uh -huh. All the business that we do we make sure we do all our paperwork and everything that we're supposed to do. So that way friendship doesn't come into it. Right. You know, we, it, it won't we be can, interfered with mm -hmm. either way, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then the other, the other inside joke that we say is the reason why we're friends for so long, because sex isn't involved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That helps. But, but yeah. I'm telling you something, you know, respect is the common thread 
it runs between all professional and business relationships yeah. or whatever. I think the ones be, that endure because yeah. we're not the same person. So we have different things that we go about mm -hmm. doing things. But, you know, the thing is, I respect this guy. He respects me. Yeah. And so, like, you know, and that's in our personal relationships, too, of mine. You know, when I have something challenging to say, I take the time to think about how I'm going to reframe it mm -hmm. and say it. And that's what we do with each other and stuff. So I always know that he's got my best interest at heart, even if we don't agree. And then we also have the freedom to say, you know what, that sucks. You know, we're writing together. We, we, you know, cause we also write songs together. Our, our public company has over 300 songs that we've co-written and been released and all that stuff. So like, you know, we can look at each other and say, man, that sucks. You know, we get it. We go, yeah, it does. You know, and keep I mean, on moving. We've been able to really squash ego. Zero. Mm -hmm. ah, and just be able to like, communicate <laughs> back and forth without worrying about people. each other's ego and each other's trips. Yeah. They don't come into play. We just actually. When did you guys figure that out, though? Because ego, ego is really tough to master, especially when you're up on a stage playing and you, you can have so much. Man, we just uh, never had it. We just never had never it. Had it. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah. We just never had it. We just, <laughs> you yeah. know, we just work together and we love each other. And we, I want him to do well. He wants me to do well. Yeah. And we's, we've just been blessed with that. And I think that's the other part of it is realizing that all of this is a blessing and a mm. gift. You know what I mean? That for any strange reason it could be taken away at any time. Yeah. yeah. You know, it could end at any time. Right. And so all of these things that we're doing and all the things that they're all blessings and gifts. And I think both of us are really good at recognizing that. It's all a gift and a blessing. When you think about the, it can't end any day. And there's people that can't be here with us anymore. Who would you guys wish was still here to see you guys at this point? Wow. Oh, oh man. It would be for me, ago. our mentor, a guy named Bill Bell. Yeah. Who, golly, he's like our second father mm -hmm. in terms of like just being professional. And I think he gave us our first gig when we were in high school. But he did get to kid. see you be successful. Oh, yeah, he did. You know, I mean, he, he, when he, he passed did. a couple of years ago, yeah, he was yeah. very big proud deal. of us. Yeah. But, you know, you know, still, I, when I just think of him, he's just like the number one. Mm -hmm. You know, he was our instrumental guy. And then our, our vocal person was a guy named Phil Reeder in high school. We was in the Castellers. He did our, you know, he kept us uh, vocally strong. Yeah, but Bill Bell, man, he was something yeah. else. He, I mean, Bill Bell was basically my second dad. Yeah. You know, when I was young, I would um, stay at his house, you know, and he would, I'd get up in the morning and eat breakfast with his kids. He'd take, take us all to school. He'd come and pick us all up. I'd have to sit there and do my homework with all the other kids. Mm -hmm. and after I finished my homework, then he'd set, sit and show me how to do arranging. I was his apprentice for like two or three years Yeah, with him doing arranging and stuff like that. And, when he passes rough. Now. Well, I remember though, he says, Hey, you guys got a suit. We're in the 12th grade or something. And, and we say, Yeah, he's so okay. Show up here at a certain, certain time. And, you know, we show up and it's right. Billy Eckstein or it's uh, Bobby. Um, I think the first big one that we did when we showed up, it was for Duke Ellington's band. Said, yeah. It was like, Say what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We showed up. High school kid. He said, do you have a suit? Yeah, right. You uh -huh. said, yeah. And yeah. he said, okay, yeah, show up at 6 o'clock. Uh -huh. And you walked in and Duke Ellington's it band was Duke Ellington's band. <laughs> and he said, get your axe out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, so many people, Earth the Kid, blah, blah, blah. Wow. You know, but what they did for us at a young age, they taught us how to be professional, how to show up on yeah. time, how to be prepared and all yeah. that. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. And it also showed us that this is real. This could happen to you. You could have a professional career. Why? Because mm -hmm. Bill Bill said this could. exists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this yeah. exists and it's yeah. here for you. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You, if you put in the work, you're just as entitled to it as anybody <laughs> exactly. else. Exactly. Yeah. That's really what I mean. There's nothing more that a teacher can do. There's the the, the practical stuff, but there's nothing more that a teacher can do but empower mm -hmm. you. Yeah. To say yes, I can do this. Mm -hmm. I am. I am capable. Mm -hmm. So, wow, what a great influence. Mm -hmm. When I brought up inside jokes, what I was talking about was <laughs> the thing that you throw in the arrangement that he's going to go, oh, I remember that. 
where you guys do things for each other that are a shorthand. Every once in a while, we'll be doing something. We'll do an interview, and I'll just say some sideways comment that Pete really knows is a joke about his daughter. Or, Hey, this is Pete A. Turner from Lions Rock Productions. We create podcasts around here, and if you, your brand, or your company want to figure out how to do a podcast, just talk to me. I'll give you the advice on the right gear, the best plan, and show you how to take a podcast that makes sense for you, that's sustainable, that's scalable, and fun. Hit me up at Pete at breakdownshow.com. Let me help. I want to hear about it. A joke about his daughter or, you know, something like that where everybody yeah. else keeps going, but we oh, just we go, got that. Oh, oh, yeah, we do have one inside thing. We actually wrote a song called If the Phone Don't Ring, You Know It's Me. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm feeling that way right now because I'm, I hired a company that's an hour and a half late. Oh. And, I'm, <laughs> and I'm seeing the drums getting here. It's 11.30, yeah, it's supposed to be at 9.30. It's supposed to be at 9.30. Uh-huh. And then, you know what? Let me, I just want to, <laughs> I just want the audience, uh, our audience to realize they're setting up, and he set up a rack tom first. Uh-huh. The drum set uh-huh. does not start there. Right, exactly. They're just setting up what came in, uh-huh. you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so He's like, working with what he's got. Uh-huh. So that comes when you with musicians, with people who work around who are not quite professional, whatever, mm. you know. So we had to write the song that the phone don't ring, you know it's me. And uh, <laughs> we actually put it on one of our records. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. That's what's in my mind right yeah. now. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. we'll, we'll do that. Sometimes we'll say that, you know, uh, there might be someone he decides he doesn't want to be a part of the situation anymore. Uh-huh. And then I'll say, what happened to it? And he just look at me. Uh-huh. You know, if the phone don't Just, ring, you know it's me. Let's <laughs> give you that uh-huh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Man. Uh-huh. What do you want out of this for everybody when they walk out of this room to be amazed with that's different from last year? Well, I want them to have um, a different experience, a great experience. Okay. That's number one, is that uh, that the musicians have a great experience, that the audience have a great experience. Mm-hmm. And because it's a different, you know, artist is going to be a different experience. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's going to be great because the technology, because the caliber of people are great. It's going to be a great experience. So I'm confident in that. It might not be what we rehearsed, <laughs> but if we get, you know, it's going to be good, yeah. you know? And so. Okay. That's great. Claytoven, your arrangements as, as you're spending those weeks on up to, when the thing comes to life, I just wanted to point out, because we've heard this time and time again, the performance is almost where everybody goes, I know the chart now. I'm going to do this thing. It's going to be great. I'm going to be a pro. But that first rehearsal is where somebody goes, you know what? I think I'm going to go for the note. (laughs) And they're doing the thing. And you say, I could could do this or I could do this. And I'm going to go for it because it's just rehearsal. (laughs) And so that's where real, real magic happens. Time and time again, that's what Mm -hmm. we hear. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, the gig was good. You should have heard that rehearsal. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, for for what I do, I'm just creating a roadmap. Uh I'm just creating Mm -hmm. a little roadmap. Mm -hmm. And the caliber of the musicians are such that if... A musician veers a little bit. Uh, it's always going to be something just incredible. Yeah. Let's see what he goes out and finds over there. You know yeah. Exactly. They have exactly. that kind of time. Ten and we want that. Right. right. Yeah. Like I said, we don't have time to rehearse Ten everything. Ten. Right. So I'm just going to make sure you have the verse and the chorus or whatever. And then read the chart. So we're expecting magic. Because, you know, imagine rehearsing three hours show, you know, that's it's not going to happen. Wow. So yeah. are you in everybody's ears? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and, and, so for our for our audience, the MV uh-huh. at a at a show often is cueing people. So, in order to get uh, instructions to people, everybody's got in ear monitors, and along with the mix that they're enjoying playing to and hearing the guy next to them the way they want to hear him, they also got orders coming through. Like, yeah, I was here say comes that bridge. part of it, which I'm glad he does, and I don't have to do. Is he's got the producer. The director. You got everybody it's, in it's, your stage, yeah, it's, it's, stage it's, manager. It's funny. It's crazy. Because, you know, because <laughs> yeah. I'm, of course, I'm listening to the music, but I'm also listening to the video cues. You know, they're going eight, nine, whatever. They're running it down. They're saying, okay, done in 10. They're saying, you know, 
I got to listen to and the the war goes to and then start the music there. Then they're coming from your left. They're coming from your right. Yeah. They're whatever. And then I get all the other stuff. What the hell is she wearing? Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> then I, I get all the conversations. I get yeah. the jokes. It can't I last. Get... <laughs> right. It can't last if you don't stay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So all of it, the video cues, all the announcing, all the stuff, all that's in my ear and the music. And so, so it's just separating all that, listening for your spot. And then I have to say something to them that I got to communicate with them as well. And then uh, I got to get, oh, they're not showing up. Cut the music. Oh, oh, stretch the music. Something's wrong with the video. Right. You know, do I get all that stuff? And so Something's all this wrong happens. With the video, stretch the music. Yeah. <laughs> the power's out. Larry, the power's fix out. this. Uh-huh. Larry, get your tap <laughs> shoes on. <laughs> so. You know, one thing. Do you guys I, have the charts coming through on iPad? We have books and we have, uh, Melvin likes to use his iPad and stuff. So okay. everything's electronically there. I had one situation where they wanted me to play off Phil Spector. You know, he was kind of long winded. And that's, what, that's the thing I really dislike the most mm. is when we have these icons there and then they're doing their accepting speech and they go on oh Larry play music cut them off and yeah. I'm going like oh my god I gotta cut how off how do I cut off Phil Spector you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you know you like, become the bad guy I gotta give him a little slack you know that I just usually have the piano player just play something you know soft give him a gentle cue yeah you know don't come in with horns and stuff yeah. you know we're yeah. here to recognize you we're done recognizing you <laughs> yeah right yeah, yeah. yeah. we so, recognize you <laughs> yeah, see you up there you know, just start going back. and then when I was 10 um, <laughs> so the horns come my out. mother you know <laughs> oh no he's only at age 18 now you know he's been on for 20 minutes you know that kind of thing you know so well that's going to be fun it's going to be fun to watch out for what i'd really like to do is when we're all done let's get back together and then great. let's do a recap of how the show went and we'll see what surprises came up and yes yes and, uh, yeah and then, then i just want to also acknowledge that i'm glad you're back in the bay Clay Tovin, I, I feel like uh, I know Larry much better than I know you, but we've only really known each other a short time. Yes, that's right. However, I describe Larry to people when they say, oh, you know Larry? I say, yes, absolutely. absolutely. I know Larry. He's my daily motivator. <laughs> I have to see what Larry has to say so that my outlook on the day can be healthy oh, and well adjusted. I appreciate that. I try to be an encourager. You definitely yeah. are an encourager. <laughs> because we know what's going on in the world. We get the news and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. like whenever and all I'm doing, I'm not the guru. You know, I'm just sharing information. So when I hear something positive, what I'm going, oh, that, that might be positive for somebody else too, you know. So yeah. That's all I'm doing. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate the two of you. I say that we're looking forward to the tech awards tonight. This is NAM 2019. We're at the Tech Awards. You guys are way, way inside uh, with MD and CoMD slash Arranger, Larry Batiste and Clay Tovin Richardson. And we're in for a treat tonight. And we will catch back up with you guys back in the Bay or afterwards. Yes, absolutely. You asked me about how we were doing tonight. tonight. (laughs) Yeah, we will definitely be at the show tonight. All right. So we're going to be able to uh, see your work in action. Thank you, gentlemen. Cool. Very good. Perfect.